Hungarian folk tales. The King's Bread. The king in this tale was tired of eating chicken and noodles and cake and milk and bread and other sweet treats every day and so he issued an order that he should be served an extraordinary dish that he had never eaten before but that it should be delicious. Well, the king's cook thought, I will do my very best. And the cook carried one spectacular dish after the last to the king's dining table. The cook tried all he could imagine. Eggs with honey, pork with sugar, fish with cream and walnuts baked in milk. But all to no avail as the king was not impressed and pushed each away with a look of disgust. No sooner had the cook placed the 13th dish before the king when he roared, enough! If you fail to bring me a dish I have never tasted, I shall have your head cut off. So the poor cook returned to the kitchen feeling sad. He thought and thought, but he simply could not think of anything clever to cook for the king. He could almost feel the executioner's axe on the back of his neck. With no idea of what to cook, he took a loaf of bread and ran away from the royal palace. When time came for supper, the following day, the king sat at his table, as he always did, but no dish was served before him. This had never happened in the palace before, and the king summoned for the cook to be brought before him, bound in chains. But where was the royal cook? They searched the palace high and low, but he was nowhere there. So then the king's carver said to the king, Your Majesty, I have to tell you that the cook has run away. The king was furious. No supper and now no cook. Was he the only man in the land to sit before a bare table when it was time to eat? So the king ordered his guards to saddle their horses and he led them out of the palace in horseback, furious and famished. They set out after the cook, soon found his trail and rode until they came to a great forest. Here they searched low and high until they sighted him atop a tree and the king shouted up, Come down you wretch, or I shall shoot. But the cook decided not to move and pretended to be dead held aloft by the tree's strong branches. So the king called his men to chop the tree down. But the guards worked as slowly as they could because they all liked the cook very much indeed, and they felt sad for his sorry fate. The king would surely have the cook's head cut off, and they would be sorry to see him go, because he had the habit of giving them delicious tidbits that the king ignored. And the roast pork and chicken always made an excellent change to their daily ration of bread.
the king soon saw that the guards were slacking and the tree would never be chopped down. Then the king's cook became so frightened by all the chopping that he dropped the loaf of bread he carried and it fell to the foot of the tree. The king saw the loaf and wondered what on earth it could be. It is a loaf of bread, sire, and not for a king, but a poor man's food. The king broke a little off and tasted it. Oh, I've never eaten such delicious food since I was a baby in my mother's arms. You rogue, you never told me that you could cook food as delicious as this loaf of bread. Come down and I shall pardon you for all your sins. The king's cook now knew that he was safe and so he climbed down the tree and stood before his sovereign. Cook, I order you that from now on, whatever you serve on my royal table must be accompanied by bread. want his daughter to marry. Once upon a time, there lived a king, a very rich king, in a castle. He had a beautiful daughter. He loved her so much that he did not want even to let her leave the castle, lest someone should take her from him. One day, however, the princess begged her father to let her walk out a little. He allowed her to do so, but not for long, so that no harm would come to her. As she was walking through the flowery meadow, she realized that a young man was approaching her. It was the son of the neighboring country's king. Both of them were so good looking that they fell in love right away. They agreed that the prince would go home and set out at once to call on the girl's father and ask for her hand in marriage. The princess went home and told her father where she had walked and whom she had met. Her father grew terribly angry and nervous that someone might take away his precious daughter. He told his daughter that he'd rather put a curse on her forever than give her to the prince. He sent a messenger to the other king, telling him not to come and ask for the hand of his daughter. But if he still wished to come, he should do so with an army that could defeat him and take his castle. The prince had already set off to the king when the messenger arrived. The king gathered his soldiers and sent them with his son. The army set off. The other king's castle was high up on a hill from where they noticed the approaching army sent by the enemy king. The king called together all his men to defend the castle against the enemy. When the approaching army reached the hill, they sent a messenger to ask the king to give his daughter without further ado. The king sent back a message that he would not do so for anything in the world. They attacked the castle and lay siege to it. Then they noticed that there was no one on the inside fighting them. The lord of the castle said he did not wish his men to die, so anyone who wanted to leave was free to do so. When the army attacked the castle, all the men inside left through underground passages, leaving only the king and his daughter behind. The princess said she would not leave because she was so in love with the prince that there was nothing she wanted more than to be his wife. The father begged her in vain, 
but she would not leave. Then her father cast a spell on her, turning the princess into three types of animals. The spell could only be broken if a young man kissed the three animals in turn. Meanwhile, the enemy had managed to make its way into the castle. They searched for the princess but could not find her anywhere. The prince was desperate. He didn't know what to do. He let his men go home and asked them to tell his father that he would not go home until he managed to find the princess and take her with him. He looked for her high and low, but in vain. He went out of the castle and wandered in the forest. He sat down and was thinking what to do when an old woman approached him. Dear Prince, the old lady said, I know what your problem is and I also know how to solve it. The old woman was no less than a witch. Tell me, old lady, I'll give you anything in exchange, but I must know the answer. The princess will come out of the castle every moonlit night. And whatever shape she comes in, rest assured, it is her. You must kiss these creatures three times in a row, and then the spell on the princess will be broken. The prince, who was prepared to do anything, waited for nightfall in the hope of seeing the princess. As the moon came up in the sky, he saw a little bunny rabbit hopping in front of the castle. He took a few steps in its direction, but the bunny did not move. He embraced it and kissed it three times, and the bunny vanished. No sooner had it disappeared than a big lion walked through the gate of the castle. Although the prince got cold feet, he remembered the old woman's words. So he approached the lion, embraced it and kissed it three times, and the lion did him no harm. Then it disappeared too. Hardly had the lion gone when the prince saw the castle surrounded by flames. A seven-headed dragon emerged, spitting fire from all of its mouths and lighting up the nearby forest. The prince took fright. This surely can't be the princess. But the dragon approached him relentlessly, showing him the huge keys in its hands as if to spur him on and say, Never fear, sweetheart. Then the prince went up to it, embraced it and kissed it three times, upon which the dragon turned into the princess. They both rejoiced and she gave him the keys. Now I am yours and with me all the wealth in this castle. They entered the castle and she showed him all the riches. Luckily there were six horses there, so they put them before a carriage and drove to the prince's father, the king. There they held their wedding right away, yet the bride did not seem very happy. The prince asked her what the problem was. I can't be happy until my father is here beside me. The prince said to her, Well, we'll find him somewhere. They didn't have to look for him for too long, as he was already on his way there. He learned that the prince had broken the spell cast on his daughter, so he came to see her. The old man was led to his daughter. They saw each other, embraced and rejoiced upon finding each other at long last. The old man made his peace with his daughter and the wedding feast went on and on and on. Hungarian Folk Tales Cercerushka Once upon a time, there lived a widower who had two daughters. His next door neighbour was a widow who never stopped recommending herself to the man. Hey, neighbour, take me for your wife. You won't regret it. I will bring up your two daughters and I'll be like a real mother to them. 
One day, the poor man finally gave in and married the widow next door. But it did not take long for the woman to start treating the girls badly. She tried everything to get them away from the house. She nagged her husband, take them both to the forest and just leave them there, let them perish. That was something horrible for the father's ears, but still, he did as the woman wanted him to. Ther Terushka, that was the name of the elder girl, heard what her father and stepmother were about to do. So she filled her pockets with grain, so she would leave a trail behind. Early next morning, the father took out his two daughters. Ther Terushka just kept spilling the grain from her pockets all along the way. When they were deep in the middle of the forest, their father told them, well, my girls, I think it's about time to take a rest, because we are all very tired. And the girls went to sleep. When the girls woke up, they started calling their father, but he was already far, far away. Don't you worry, little sister. We will trace our way back along the grain that I spilled as we came this way. But they couldn't find the grain because the birds had pecked it all up, and the girls just couldn't find their way home. On top of all of that, their stepmother had cursed them before they left. If you drink from the track of an animal, you are going to change into that animal. As they were walking in the endless forest, the younger girl became thirsty. She spotted the footprint of a cow that was full of clean water. Sister, oh dear sister, I'm so thirsty, I have to drink. Don't drink, sister, because you will turn into an animal. A little later, the little girl got left behind and she drank from the footprint of a deer. When Ther Terushka looked back, she saw the little deer running after her. Ther Terushka kept on going forward with the deer, following her until she finally found a hollow tree. There she gathered up some dry leaves and made a comfortable bed. One day, a young prince was hunting in the forest and he spotted the beautiful Ther Terushka. The prince called after them. Come on out, you beautiful girl. I cannot, because I have a dear sister and you want to kill her. Come on out with the deer. I won't touch her. So Ther Terushka finally came out and she was so beautiful that the prince was lost for words. When he found his voice again, he immediately asked her to marry him. Let's get married. I'll be yours and you'll be mine and we'll live happily forever and a day. He kissed her and embraced her. Then they both got on his horse and the prince married the girl. Time passed by. The king was on a hunt one day when Ther Terushka gave birth to a son. His name was Little King Andriku. Before I forget what I was going to say, I wanted to tell you that there lived a mean cook in the court who had an ugly daughter. She had always dreamt that her own daughter would be the queen one day, so it was no surprise that she hated Ther Terushka. Your Majesty, you are so beautiful. There is a pond in the garden. You should go and take a look at yourself. When they walked around the water, the cook suddenly shoved her into the pond. When this was done, the cook woman quickly changed her own daughter's dress and made her lay down in Ter Terushka's bed. Soon the king returned from the hunt. The evil cook told him the good news. You have a son. His name is little King Andriku. Just take a look, your majesty. The king was very happy and he kissed the baby boy. He was about to kiss his wife, but he was horrified at what he saw. Oh my goodness, what became of my wife? How could she become as ugly as this? It was childbirth that did it to her, explained the cook. The king was sad, but since there was nothing he could do, he finally accepted the change. Each night, Ter Terushka came back and visited the deer in her room. She kept asking, Is little King Andriko crying? Of course he is, dear sister. Barren women have no milk. One day the cook's daughter heard this. She was determined to get rid of the deer before it caused her downfall. So she said to the king, Darling husband, I'm feeling very weak. I will feel no better until I can eat the heart and liver of this little deer. The deer must be killed. As they were sharpening the knife and washing the bowl for her blood, the deer ran out to the pond and called out, My darling Ter Terushka, 
get up from the depths, from the stomach of the big fish, because they want to cut my throat with a knife, they want to catch my blood in a bowl, they want to kill me too. Then Tserterushka stepped out of the pond, walked up to the deer, and stroked her gently. She was even more beautiful than before. The king heard and saw everything because he was secretly following the deer. He embraced and kissed Tserterushka, who told him everything. The king immediately went to see the cook. He said to the cook, What would you do to the person who would not hesitate to destroy my wife? What? I would have the person tied to a horse's tail and have him dragged through the town. And the old woman and her daughter were treated exactly as the old hag had predicted. The king took Tserterushka and the little deer back to the palace and they all lived happily ever after.